Now because hydrogen bonds are quite strong in the molecular forces, they tend to give molecules that contain them unusual properties, or another word for that is anomalous properties. So we'll look at water. It has three unusual or anomalous properties. So the first one is it has an unusually high boiling point or a higher boiling point than expected. You can't just say water's got a high boiling point, you have to say it's higher than expected. So very simply, if you, there's two water molecules drawn up to overcome the attraction between the molecules, so in other words, to overcome that strong hydrogen bond and turn it into a gas, we've got to put in more energy than you would expect. And so that's going to raise the boiling point of the water as a result. So as a point of comparison, hydrogen sulfide, you see I've written there, H2S is a gas at room temperature and pressure. H2S has a much higher MR than water. It's a very similar molecule because it contains two hydrogens and a group six member. Um, but because it hasn't got hydrogen bonding between its molecules, it has a lower boiling point, so low that it's actually a gas at room temperature and pressure. So I hope you didn't make up my scribble in the corner there. There's two hydrogen sulfide molecules, but because we haven't got an H bonded to an F, an O or an N, we can't call these hydrogen bonds. They're permanent dipole, permanent dipole forces, which are weaker than hydrogen bonds. And so it's easier to turn this into a gas. And as a result, it is a gas at room temperature and pressure. The second anomalous property of water is that it has surface tension. So again, I'll just use the same diagram here. So if you imagine um, a very sort of small insect, like something like a pond skater or something like that, the water molecules are held together by these hydrogen bonds to such an extent that these creatures can actually walk on the water. So these water molecules aren't just drifting apart really easily. There's, there's a force, decent force holding them together and so these creatures can actually walk on the water and it um, gives it this surface tension property. The third and final anomalous property of water is that ice is less dense than water. So in other words, ice floats on water and that's because when ice forms, the hydrogen bonds, once you get past or below four degrees Celsius, water has actually reached its maximum density and the hydrogen bonds start to extend and the water molecules are actually forced further apart. So the volume begins to increase in the water. Obviously its mass stays the same. So if you take 10 grams of water and freeze it, you've still got 10 grams of water. You don't lose any of the mass, but the volume increases because it forms what's known as an open lattice. So it gets an open lattice structure with a greater volume than the 10 grams of water had to start with. And so its density um, decreases. And so ice is less dense than water and that's why it floats.